So making wine in uh, with high pH grapes uh, can be pretty challenging. Uh, as you know, pH impacts strongly uh, microbial stability, oxidative stability, but not only. pH can also affect um, the tartaric stability, protein, and color stability. So we have to uh, think strongly about adapting the winemaking process when we are dealing with high pH grapes, um, because basically all the stabilities have been uh, are impacted by uh, pH. What I'm going to say is applicable for any wine, but in our condition of higher pH, as you know, we have higher risk of spoilage, which involves higher exigence and control. We will go through each step of the vinification and see which tool can help us to control microbial development. Beginning with harvest and transportation, here we have to respect the integrity of the grape. If we damage it, we release nutrients, so sugar, malic acids, vitamins, to microbes and it's open door to spoilage. You also can use antimicrobial agents, I will speak about it later, and it is also necessary to train well your team during or before harvest to sort out contaminated grapes. Then, during both fermentation, alcoholic and malolectic, um, we need to be sure that it will be clean and complete thanks to an adapted nutrition. Finally, during aging, it is basically the same as during harvest, but with different tools, avoiding to give microbe nutrients and using antimicrobial agents. For higher exigence of hygiene, Bouchard Vasselin developed easy to clean and easy to disassemble equipment and quick release belt system. To respect the integrity of your grapes, choosing a distimer that preserves the fruit in the best condition is essential. The oscillis, the machine on your right, and delta evolution, evolution the one on your left, are well known to, for hyper qualitative treatment of the berry in fragile harvest conditions. Also, Bouchard Vasselin is a pioneer, the pioneer in sorting machine, so you can visit our website to know our range of sorting tables and opti optical sorting. And still speaking about the first steps of the vinification, so after, after picking and before alcoholic fermentation, our most commonly used antimicrobial agent is the SO2, and we almost use it uh, in an automatic way but is SO2 is pH dependent and that's what we are going to speak about now. So you, as you know we have the bound one and the free one. The bound one doesn't have any effect as antimicrobial, antioxidant or antioxidasic. We are looking for the free one and in the free one the molecular one. And in order to have an antimicrobial effect we need 0 0.8 ppm milligram per liter. Here on the graph, you can see the amount of free SO2 we need to add in order to reach this point, depending on the pH. So if we take the example of 3.7 pH, we see that we need to add 60 mg per liter of free SO2, which is a huge amount, and that's why we need to find an alternative to SO2. As alternative, we have the ketosan, which is the favorite product of eglantine, so I will let her speak about it later and the lysozyme. You also can choose a bioprotection, which is a natural way to control or stop the development of microbes, creating the best environment for the organism you really want, in our case, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Lamotabier developed excellence by your nature, which is a pure Mechnikovia pulcherima, a yeast with no fermentation capacities, no inhibition of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, no resistance to alcohol, so what's happened is that when uh, that they colonize with a strong dominance, thanks to the secretion of pulcherimine before alcoholic fermentation, and as soon as it begins, your Saccharomyces cerevisiae takes the control. No flavor production and resist to difficult conditions, so low and high temperature, SO2 level, and pH. How to use it? It is really simple, you just have to sprinkle it directly on the grapes as soon as possible in your bin before um, processing at reception or in the tank, tank. Uh, 50 grams per ton. It can reduce or replace the use of, of SO2. 
If you need testimonial, you can watch our previous webinar or ask us. We are having a lot of success with the excellence by your nature. And still speaking about microorganisms, after creating the best environment for your yeast, you need to ensure a clean and complete um, alcoholic and malolactic fermentation. Going wild with a high pH is pretty risky. We all want to avoid those famous flavors of house, house, mouse, vinegar, cheese. And to avoid it, we really advise you to select well your yeast and optimize your nu nutrition. I encourage you to watch our two previous webinars about those two subjects. Now I will let Eglantine speak about the aging. Thank you, Leah. So once we're arriving to uh, at the end of the fermentation and talk about aging, if you did everything that what Leah told you, um, which is controlling microbes at the beginning, at really early in the process with BioNature, and then controlling your fermentation properly, um, we should not have many um, problem, I would say, or much challenge for aging. We just talk about prevention in this case. But we are going to talk also about, treat also about treatments because um, it we have to. Uh, we should. So, um, but really, in terms of prevention, there is a few things to really take care of to reduce um, the risk of contamination. The first one is to check the lees and the topping wine, which are the most common source of contamination. Very commonly, uh, the topping wine that we use all around the cellar is actually the one that is contaminated and you just inoculate all your barrels um, with this wine. So very important to check it and the lees as well. How to check this? You just want to taste, smell, and even better analyze if possible. Then uh, sanitation and hygiene are obviously essential. Uh, you also want to reduce uh, the um, nutrients or the favorable conditions for these microbes. So you do want to have lower dissolved oxygen and work at lower temperature. And as a last point, um, you can use antimicrobial agents early in the process. Uh, this step uh, early in the process means post-malolactic fermentation. This is a list of uh, antimicrobial agents we have available um, to us in, uh, in the wine uh, making process. We um, are going to pass on the sulfur. As uh, Leah explained, uh, sulfur is uh, the action of sulfur as an antimicrobial effect is pH dependent. And when we are talking about high pH wine, we don't have uh, this option available to us. Um, the second uh, one that we can use is uh, lysozyme. Lysozyme is a protein that is derived from egg white, coming from egg white, um, that works very good on a lactic acid bacteria. So it removes Lactobacillus, Pediococcus, Onococcus. Doesn't have much effect on yeast or Acetobacter, but it has a strong effect on lactic acid bacteria. It has some side effects as well. So lysozyme being a protein coming from egg white is allergenic, but also uh, it's uh, gonna react with color, so you reduce color, and it's gonna, it's gonna require more bentonite in white and um, rosé. Next one is ketosan. As I uh, told you, um, I uh, like a lot this awesome molecule that is actually um, very cool. It's, it has a wide spectrum antimicrobial effect, so we can use it to uh, kill and eliminate um, Brettanomyces. Lactobacillus, Pediococcus, Onococcus, Acetobacter, and some other non-saccharomyces. So pretty much every single microbe uh, we consider as foliage in wine can be um, controlled and eliminated by um, using ketosan. Then uh, sorbate and DMDC are and agents that we are using more pre-bottling to um, avoid a re-fermentation in case of a sweet wine or um, avoid the contamination or a development of retanomyces during aging. They are commonly used, but they don't do much on bacteria. They are used for yeast. So let's focus a little bit more on ketosan that uh, seems to be the pretty obviously the most awesome antimicrobial agent. <laughs> So um, ketosan is coming from the deacetylation of ketin. It is a polysaccharide uh, that uh, is derived from aspergillus niger. So this said, it means that it's a vegan um, 
finding agent that is allergen free, biodegradable, and has a wide spectrum um, antimicrobial effect. How it works? Um, it's uh, pretty simple. Uh, there is some uh, positive charge on the molecule, as you can see uh, on the screen. And the, the molecule is going to attract as a magnet uh, microbe uh, cell walls. Microbe cell walls, all of them have residual negative charge. So ketogen are going to attract each other, uh, ketogen and microbe are going to attract each other as a magnet. And at this point, there is an interaction with the cell membranes. So first, the ketogen is going to block the receptors, interrupting the cell metabolism and the exchange with inside outside. Second, the ketogen is going to perform the cytoplasmic membrane, leading to leakage of the cell, which results in the death of the cell. And third, ketosan as a finding agent and soluble in wine is going to settle this cell down. Pretty dramatic, um, very intense story, but uh, yeah, ketosan is very efficient and effective because you can interrupt the metabolism, you can perform the cytoplasmic membrane to kill the cells, and you settle them down, so you just have to rack it out and you eliminate everything from your wine. Um, going with the drama, uh, we uh, developed a kill bread with a pretty uh, strong um, marketing uh, picture. As you can see, kill bread, La Motelier developed kill bread, which is a 100% ketosan, so pure ketosan. Uh, this allowed us to have a very efficient treatment at low dosage. So we have a limited impact on the organoleptic profile of the wine. We can use it in two ways. The first way is preventive. If we use it in prevention, we are always recommending to uh, rack post malolactic fermentation. Racking the gross leaves will help you to eliminate uh, a good amount of microbes that live in the leaf. And then you can add two to four grams per hectolitre of killbreath. This will uh, allow you to be protected for at least four months. We saw that killbreath is active for four months. The second um, application of killbread is a curative way. So that's uh, if we are talking about treatment. So if you do have a contamination, uh, if you do have spoilage, if you know you have a higher population of microbes that you need to eliminate from your wine, you are going to rack off the gross leaves, um, making your racking a little bit cleaner than if you are in prevention. Um, you can add six to eight grams per hectolitre of killbread. This will be enough to take care of bigger population of microbes. Then the time the killbread settle, which usually takes a good 10 days, you have time to uh, clean your barrels or prepare a new tank to go in. You rack back, you rack back in your clean barrel, um, leaving the leaves of the killbread with the dead cells behind you. And then you can add two grams per hectolitre of killbread at this point, just to maintain a protection and be protected for this four months um, period. The activity of the oxidasic uh, enzymes, so PPO and lacase, are um, increased. So they go faster when they are uh, in high pH conditions, uh, which means that basically all our phenolic compounds uh, are getting oxidized much faster on grapes and juice. Then in wine, uh, the consumption of oxygen of the wine will be faster as well when we are talking about high pH wines, and um, the oxidation of phenolic compounds will be faster too. So basically, your um, wine is much more sensitive to oxygen, and your shelf life is shortened. So we are going to see how, uh, during the process, we can uh, manage this oxidation, limit this oxidation reactions to really uh, make sure we can have a wine that can live as long as we want to. So first step is uh, to work on the um, oxidizing enzyme, so to inhibit the development, the activity of PPO and lacase. And in this case, we are going to work uh, with sacrificial tannins, also limiting oxygen contact, obviously, and respecting the integrity of the grapes uh, for the same reason than what Leah told you previously. When we arrive to uh, fermentation, there is not much we can do here because yeast uh, will use the oxygen before the wine can use it. So we are covered, we are protected. The only important point here is to stabilize color. And um, we recommend you to watch our previous webinar on color stability. 
where uh, we really focus on uh, the topic that um, needs a full half an hour discussion to be um, well explained. Then um, the last part of the process is obviously uh, aging. Um, and at this point, we need to be careful with our cellar practices. So use inert gas every time we are uh, transferring wine, every time we are pumping wine, using proper pump and proper equipment. And also we can work in enhancing oxidation resistance to the wine uh, by um, increasing the content of glutathione, for example, or working with some tannins. So first step is to protect grapes and juice during transport. I just told you sacrificial tannins are a very good option here because they have been selected to react strongly with protein, which means they will inhibit PPO and lacase, but also re reacting with protein will allow us in red wine to protect our phenolic compounds from reacting with protein since the sacrificial tannin will do. And in white wine or rosé, it would allow us to uh, not use as much bentonite, which in high pH um, becomes an issue. We uh, at La Motelier developed two um, tannins for this. So we have tannangalical alcohol, which is for white and rosé. Uh, it is a pure gallic tannin that uh, has uh, the powder itself, the color of the powder itself is actually light. So you don't give any color to your um, juice or wine. Then we have protanin R, which is a sacrificial tannin for red grapes, pure uh, proantocyanidic tannin that we use uh, from 120 to 180 grams per ton. To give you a little um, idea of which results you can get, um, you can see the picture here. In a red wine, the control got nothing. Uh, the um, second glass got 10 grams per hectoliter of protein R, and the third glass got 20 grams per hectoliter of protein R. You can obviously see uh, the color uh, difference, which basically our protein R um, inhibits the PPO and the lacase, so there is no um, oxidation from the enzyme at this stage, and there is also uh, no loss of phenolic compound that um, could have reacted with protein because the protein R did react with the protein. So doing this, we really uh, improve color intensity and color stability. The last point that is important to say on these two tannins is that uh, La Motelier have a pre-unique process of production that allowed us to make tannins that are uh, instantaneously uh, soluble. So you can actually use the powder directly. You can sprinkle the powder, uh, on the grapes, as um, you could sprinkle the bio nature, you can sprinkle the tannangalical alcohol and the protein R without any problem uh, with uh, making clumps or dissolution. The next step uh, in the process is to talk uh, about stabilizing the juice, um, stabilizing the wine uh, at the juice phase. So we are trying to think ahead. We are again trying to work in a preventive way and trying to work as early as possible in the process. This step is uh, for white and rosé, and we are talking about fining in this case, because fining will allow you to eliminate unstable phenolic compounds that are oxidation precursors. So by eliminating them at the juice phase, you really stabilize your wine regarding oxidation because there is no more precursor to be oxidized. Then fining will also allow you to eliminate the oxidized phenolic compounds, so you really improve the structure and the aromas of your wine. So overall, you are improving your wine stability. Finding at this step can also uh, be a good moment to use bentonite and help your uh, protein uh, removal, so help protein stability. Overall, uh, it has been shown that when we do uh, fine juice, we are improving aromatic expression as we are removing every off flavor that could be present and we are removing any precursors of oxidation without removing aromas since they are not produced yet. So doing it in juice compared to wine has a huge uh, positive impact on aromatic expression of your wine. We're improving color since we are removing any browning or any molecules that will brown later and same with the pinking. We are improving, uh, stabilizing regarding pinking. Obviously, we improve clarification because that's the goal of uh, finding. 
Um, we are proposing three finding agents uh, for this uh, goal of stabilizing wine uh, towards oxidation and already having a um, clean juice uh, to start uh, working on during fermentation. We have Polymix Nature, which is a vegan allergen-free finding agent. It is PVPP, yeast, uh, protein extract, and bentonite all together that will really help you to prevent and treat oxidation. Then Polymix is the same version, but not vegan. Uh, it is PVPP and casein. And then we have caseinix that is a pure casein that always works very good to treat and prevent oxidation. The next step here, uh, obviously, is the fermentation, where I told you we don't have to care about uh, oxygen at this point in terms of um, being scared of oxidation. Um, and after fermentation, we arrive to um, chemical reactions, uh, chemical oxidation reactions in wine that are slower than uh, the enzymatic reaction, but they still happen and they happen faster when we are talking about high pH conditions. I'm not going to go in detail in the full graph that you have in front of you. I'm just going to try to uh, point out where we can act to uh, prevent or to stop these reactions from happening. So obviously, any oxidation reaction starts with uh, the presence of oxygen. So um, uh, limiting oxygen contact is going to be a key uh, step here. So limiting oxygen contact means use good equipment uh, use good cellar practices, stop your wine regularly, uh, use inert gas uh, when you are doing any transfer. Um, so just be careful of oxygen. The second step here is going to be to remove precursors of oxidation. And we just talked about it. This step is um, more for white and rosé, as usually we don't really want to remove the phenolic compounds in red wine, because that's what makes the structure and the color. So polymix nature, polymix, or caseinix uh, will be good options here. Then we can uh, scavenge radicals. So the idea here is to scavenge radicals before uh, they can react with our phenolic compounds uh, and before they um, produce a quinone. To scavenge radicals, we can work with a vinitan advance, which is a great tannin. We can work with tannescent volume, which is untoasted tannin. But we can also work with our own leaves that will consume oxygen faster uh, than the wine. Be extra careful with your leaves, as we just uh, talked about before. Um, taste them and make sure they are not contaminated with uh, microbes uh, before you use them. The last step here, uh, where we can really have an impact in oxidation reaction, is to actually uh, increase the amount of glutathione uh, in the wine or in the mass. Glutathione is a natural antioxidant um, element or molecule that is present in grapes, so in mast and in wine. Usually when we arrive at the end of the wine life, there is no more glutathione. All has been used as an antioxidant. Um, glutathione is the first molecule reacting with the quinone. So when you do transform a phenolic compound into a quinone, which is the first step of oxidation, you will go with the glutathione. So if we enhance the content of glutathione in the wine, we are increasing the antioxidant protection of the wine as we trap the quinone. We keep trapping the quinone, making it not available to oxidize other phenolic compounds of aromas. Aroma Protect is a yeast derivative that um, La Motadier developed particularly to increase really this um, natural antioxidant protection of the wine or resistance. Uh, towards oxidation, and it is yeah, yeast derivate very rich in glutathione uh, that you can use at, um, the, at the end of fermentation, basically. Okay, so very quickly, uh, most feel as uh, two big components. We have the acidity and the phenolic compound on one hand way on one hand that will uh, inhibit each other actually uh, but they are responsible of freshness tension but also if you go too far uh, aggressivity on the other side uh, we have the polysaccharide alcohol and sugar that are responsible of sweetness viscosity oiliness body of the wine but also if you go too far you end up with a wine that is flabby and heavy so in high ph wines 
our balance is usually like this. We are having a very low acidity, so all the weight is, uh, is, is taken by polysaccharide, sugar, and alcohol. So we will need to re-establish an equilibrium, the balance, to end up in a situation uh, like you see in your screen, where phenolic acidity and polysaccharide, sugar, alcohol are on the same level, and they can weight the same um, weight. So the tools that we have available for you here uh, can be acid adjustment. Uh, acid adjustment can be done at a certain extent, so it's interesting to do them, but then um, you want to make sure your acid is well integrated in the wine, so it's something that you really want to uh, try. Then you can have a higher tannin content. So if you do add tannins, you will give more weight to this uh, phenolic and acidity uh, pool and you can reestablish the balance. And for this, uh, we usually recommend to use grape tannins or oak tannins, but we are really happy to send you samples of our tannins um, to uh, ready experiment and taste uh, in your wine the result. The last option is to lower uh, the sweetness, so have lower sugar. You can't really do much about polysaccharide and alcohol at this stage, so only the sugar can be uh, adjusted. Okay, so pretty simple, and we will send you uh, sample kits if you um, are willing to. If we do uh, a summary of this presentation that was pretty um, complex because we treated a lot of topics, uh, but basically dealing with high pH condition uh, means being extra uh, vigilant, uh, being extra careful and uh, make a lot of uh, good way making choices all along the process. The first uh, step is starting with uh, having a good microbial control um, on grapes with uh, Excellence Bio Nature. Since we can't use sulfur, Excellence Bio Nature is your only option here and will work very good. Then to inhibit PPO and lacase and also protect uh, your phenolic compound to react with protein and improve your protein stability, we can use sacrificial tannins such as protanin R and tannin gallical alcohol. Uh, you will, in this case, really touch every single stability we talked about previously. Microbial, oxidative, color, and protein. Then um, for white and rosé, you want to prepare your juice before fermentation by doing a fining. The fining will allow you to remove oxidized um, phenolic compounds and easily oxidable phenolic compounds, so unstable uh, compounds. So by removing them, you improve your wine stability towards oxidation. And this is done by a finding with polymix nature, polymix or caseimix. During fermentation, just a good management of the yeast and the nutrition, as Leah explained you. Uh, we did a webinars on this topic previously, so feel free to watch them on our YouTube channel. Then once we arrive to the aging part, a Kilbred is your option to really have a full control on the microbial development uh, without even uh, thinking about sulfur. So Kilbred allows you to protect your wine and to, um, from microbial spoilage and to really have a full uh, cover for at least four months. Aroma Protect will uh, reinforce or enhance uh, the amount of um, natural antioxidant protection your wine has, so you give a lot of glutathione, which will really help you elongating, uh, elongating uh, the shelf life of your wine and improving this uh, resistance to oxidation. And then working with an Italian advance, which is a great tannin, a tan essence volume that is an toasted oak tannin or tan essence forte, which is a toasted oak tannin, will help you balancing the mouthfeel and also catching in your radicals that can be oxygen radicals that can be present, improving your um, antioxidant protection of the white.